hello. It is a pleasure to welcome all of you to tonight's presentation by Bob Proctor. Bob Proctor was featured in the blockbuster hit The Secret, and he's widely regarded as one of the living masters and teachers of the law of attraction. He's worked in the area of mind potential for over 45 years. He's the best-selling author of You Were Born Rich, and he's transformed the lives of millions through his books, seminars, courses, and personal coaching. Proctor is a direct link of the modern science of success, stretching all the way back to Andrew Carnegie. Now, as you may know, Carnegie's secrets inspired and enthused Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, which in turn inspired a whole genre of success philosophy. Napoleon Hill, in turn, passed the baton directly to Earl Nightingale, who then placed it in Bob Proctor's very capable hands. Bob Proctor's company, Life Success Productions, is headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona, and it operates globally. Now, Sandra Gallagher was a corporate attorney for over 21 years with expertise in handling billions of dollars in mergers, acquisitions, capital raising transactions. She's advised corporate boards and high-ranking executives from startup to Fortune 50. In 2006, Sandra Gallagher met Bob Proctor and she immersed herself as a dedicated student of this material. Sandra Gallagher is the CEO and president of Bob Proctor's Life Success Group of Companies, and she is the co-author of Thinking into Results with Bob Proctor. She works very closely with Proctor and his team in Life Success, as well as the licensed Thinking into Results facilitators who facilitate and coach on Bob Proctor's core materials globally. It is a pleasure to walk, welcome our presenter for the evening, Mr. Bob Proctor. Bob, are you on the line? Bob is on the line. Thank you, Rebecca. I uh, am happy to be here tonight and share these ideas with everyone. But you know, I go back a long time in this business, and corporations today are screaming for the information that we're going to be talking about here tonight or this afternoon, just depending on where you are. But, you know, there's one thing that we want to really stop and think about. Everyone has tremendous potential locked up within them. Vernon Howard one time pointed out, you can't escape from a prison if you don't know you're in one. A lot of people are in a prison of their own making. They're just not making things happen. And we have found when we take the material that we have into a company, or into a family, everything seems to change. They become much more productive. See, when people in a company become more productive, the increase in profits goes right to the bottom line. Now, that's an interesting thing. You know, nothing's changed except the, uh, the business that you're, that you're dealing with uh, stays the same, but the productivity increases. Now, for over 40 years, Life Success Productions has been assisting corporations from around the world to substantially increase their productivity. Now, although we believe that the first order of business is profit, since a company cannot survive without profit, we do not believe it is the purpose of any human organization. The purpose of all human organizations is to make life more meaningful. And the program Thinking into Results is a, a very powerful program. Now, if you happen to uh, have something come up that you've got to jump off the line, you, you can uh, go for the information that you see here. Just go to bobproctor.com, earn as you learn, and you'll be able to get the information that you might be missing here on the call, or if you wish further information. And um, we'll be giving that number out again at the uh, end of the presentation. But thinking into results is a very powerful program. And what we have here is a unique opportunity for individuals to become certified as facilitators in this business. And as I go through this, I think you'll see the value of this and the tremendous opportunity that it is. I want you to think of this for a moment. If a loved one came and asked you where they could go to learn how to substantially increase or improve their ability to earn money, where would you send them? 
And you might be wondering, well, why are you asking me that? Well, let me ask you a couple more questions before I answer that. I believe that you should demand answers to these questions. Why do so many brilliant people continue to have financial difficulties all through life? Now, there's a lot of people who are really brilliant. You can't say they're stupid. They're not stupid. They're brilliant. And yet they have financial difficulties all the way through life. Now look at the, the reverse. Why do so many people who are functionally illiterate, they can neither read nor write, uh, become millionaires? That puzzled me for a long time when I was a bit of a, a kid and I started to really think. I saw some people that weren't very bright and were very wealthy. Now I saw some others who were very bright and they were very wealthy too. But I see a lot of people who are bright and they're not very wealthy. Why does only 1% of our population earn 96% of all the money that's being earned? Now that's a question everyone should be wondering. We know that it's very unevenly just, you know, distributed. But why? Why can a child learn multiple languages, but we don't teach them anything about how to earn money? I had a, an associate of mine in Kuala Lumpur, a little boy at four years old, could speak four languages. Now where I come from, most people have difficulty learning one. But here they, little children, can learn multiple languages. And there's many parts of the world where that happens. But we don't teach them anything about earning money. You see, all the way our education all the way through our educational system, no one teaches us how to earn money. They don't. Now you may say, well money's not the most important thing. No it isn't. But it is vitally important because money is the medium of exchange that's used by a civilized society. All over the world, it's what you use to buy your food, you know, buy your cars, uh, rent an office, build an office, you know, take a trip. It's the medium of exchange that's used for other people's products or services. Now, if we look at this, thinking into results. Results automatically improve when people begin thinking. They really do. And what we're presenting here is an opportunity to take this program into other people's homes or into their company. And the people that use this, our facilitators, they're way ahead of the crowd. They really are. And why? It's because thinking and result facilitators get results for their clients. Now TIR is thinking and result, abbreviated, facilitators have the best material and the best training in the world. I've been at this for a long, long time. Now I'm going to show you where my education comes from. It goes back around 51 years ago. I began to study what this man shared with Napoleon Hill because he was Hill's mentor. And he said, any idea that is held in the mind that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered, will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate form available. Now that was the essence of uh, his philosophy. He came to America as a young man from Scotland, and he uh, had nothing, and yet, he died the wealthiest man in the world. He was considered to be the first billionaire. Now a young man named Napoleon Hill, and he was very young, um, got an interview with Andrew Carnegie in the fall of 1908. Now, I want you to think of this. Hill was in his 20s, his early 20s. He's sitting down with Carnegie, who is the wealthiest man in the world. You can imagine how Hill felt. I would imagine he must have been fairly nervous. He got a three-hour interview with him. At the end of the three-hour interview, Carnegie said, this interview isn't ending, it's just beginning. And he said, I want you to come with me, young men, and he took him home. And he spent three days sharing his philosophy on life with him. And at the end of the three days, he, uh, he said to Hill, I believe it's a shame that people like myself go to their grave with all this knowledge in them. Now he said, I'm going to ask you a question. And he said, I want you to give me a yes or no answer. 
He said, would you spend the rest of your life or dedicate the rest of your life to an idea for which you would probably receive no material compensation for at least 20 years? No unbeknownst to Hill, Carnegie gave him 60 seconds to answer the question. He had a stopwatch under his desk. And in 25 seconds, Hill said, yes, I will. And you know, I've thought about that for around 50 years. I wondered, what would I have done if I was there? And every time I spend any time thinking about it, I come to the conclusion I probably would have done what Hill did. Uh, I would have said yes. You see, Hill had spent three days with them. And I would imagine at the end of three days, he would have had a pretty good reading on Carnegie. And I think he knows that Carnegie wouldn't have asked him to do something that was unjust or unlawful. Um, and so he, he said yes. And he said, I want you to go out and interview some of the most successful people in the world. And he said, I'm going to give you letters of introduction. He became intimate friends with um, Henry Ford, uh, Thomas Edison, Harvey Firestone, Woodrow Wilson. And he was an advisor to presidents of the United States. And he took what he learned and he put it in this book. Now, years later, that was in 1937, this book came out. He has spent his whole life studying this. And he condensed it and put it in a book in 1937. In 1961, on October the 21st, I picked up that book. My life changed like night and day. Now, Carnegie passed along the hill, and Hill passed along to this man who was a broadcaster in Chicago. Earl Nightingale um, retired at the age of 35, taking Hill's material and studying it. And then one day he wrote a recording called The Strangest Secret. I got a hold of that recording shortly after I got a hold of the book and I began to study it. And I found out that these two men had started a company that was literally to change the world because it was a company that distributed personal growth, business development material. Now, I had taken that material. I was working as a firefighter in a suburb of Toronto. I was earning $4,000 a year, and I owed six. You know, one year later, I was earning $175,000 a year, and I took it over a million dollars a year. I was absolutely astounded with what happened. But I wasn't satisfied just with what happened. I wanted to know why did it happen. I had no formal education. I had no business experience. And yet I built a business that was operating in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, and London, England. I became so fascinated with the subject because I had been raised to believe if you can't earn a lot of money unless you're really smart. I knew I wasn't that smart, but I was earning a lot of money. I also bought into the idea you can't build a company or get a good job if you haven't got a formal education. I had two months high school, and yet here I was running this company. So I made up my mind I was going to leave that business, and I was going to go and work with these two men, and I was going to learn what happened to me. Why did I change? Now, that was me in 1968, and everything in my life changed, everything. We put this program together a number of years ago. It's a program that changes results. You see, my results changed, and I wanted to share it with the whole world. I wanted everyone to know why my results changed. It took me nine years to figure out what had happened. Now, I'm going to share a little bit of that with you here in this presentation. And then we're going to talk about this as, from an opportunity perspective, because it's a unique opportunity. It's an opportunity to be in this industry, which is one of the highest paid professions in the world, and certainly one of the most fascinating. And you know, companies, if you think of this, have historically left their greatest resource largely untapped. James Lincoln was right. He said, that resource is the intelligence, the initiative, the productive power latent in every individual. 
What we're going to talk about here is a great opportunity, and it's based on four points, just four points, on paradigms. What is a paradigm? How do they play a role in our life? How do they play a role in everyone's life? And you're going to find it rather interesting. The second P is perception. Because you see, when you change your point of view, when you change how you look at something, what you're looking at changes. And you're going to find as you shift your perception, your whole world changes. And it changes very quickly. Nothing complicated about it if we understand it. It's about power. It's about the power that lies dormant in every individual. So we're going to take that paradigm, perception, power, and we're going to show you how to turn it into profit for yourself and for others. Now to do this, there's a couple of points that we have to be familiar with. Two things a person must know to improve their performance. They have to know where they are, and they have to know where they're going. I want you to imagine yourself sharing the information that I'm going to share with you right now with somebody else. We've put it together in a very organized way. Now, if that's the only two things you have to know to really win in life, why it's so simple and so obvious, why are there so many people stuck? Now, that is the question we're going to share with you right now. Most people would say, well, they lack a goal. And that could be the answer. But I don't think it is. I think the answer is over here. It's where we are. You see, most people know how to do a better job than they're doing. The problem is they're not doing it. Most of us cannot figure out why we do what we do. Many people are doing things they don't want to do. They're giving results they don't want to get. They do it anyway. Well, there's your answer right there. It's paradigms. And the more you understand paradigms, the more your real life will change. Now, let's take a look at what paradigms do, because it's rather an interesting concept. And the more you dig into it, the more interesting it becomes. Paradigms shape your logic. And you know your logic is like a lead steel above you. It's about a ceiling that just you can't penetrate it. You'll hear people say, well, that's just totally illogical. You couldn't do that. You see, the whole world was left believing the world was flat for a long, long time. Logic. How would anybody live on the side of it? Forget the bottom. It took the Wright brothers to break through logic, to do something that was totally illogical to introduce us to the kingdom of flight. That's how Edison illuminated the world. Now, you see, we look at Edison and, and Einstein and all these different people, and we think that they must have hit this planet by some mistake in celestial navigation, but they're different than you and me. The truth is they're not different. It's just that they don't follow the masses. They have the courage and the desire to break out, break through logic. You see, it's illogical to think that you could turn your annual income to a monthly income. But if you'll get illogical, I could show you how to do it. You know, your paradigm controls your time. It controls how you utilize time. Everybody gets exactly the same amount of time. They get all there is. So it's what we do with it that makes the difference. Some people accomplish more in a month than other people will in a lifetime. How does that happen? Well they become more effective. Our effectiveness is determined by our paradigm. And that effectiveness is going to dictate our productivity. But you see, the paradigms also control our perception. And get this, the paradigms control your ability to earn money. Now, when I really understood that, a whole lot of things started to change. If someone's coming to work with me, one of the first things I ask them is what's the most they've ever earned in a year? I don't really care what the answer is. But when they give me the answer, I know where their paradigm is set. Now you say, well, what is paradigms? It's a good question. What are paradigms? Paradigms are nothing but a multitude of habits. But get this, 
There are other people's habits. There are other people's habits. They're not ours. They've been passed on from one generation to the next. Now think about that for a moment. Many of your beliefs, in fact, most of your beliefs you inherited. You didn't originate them yourself at all. All kinds of habits, the food you like, the language you speak, they were not decisions that you made. They were passed on, programmed, sent to us. Now, what do we have to look at to figure this out? Well, Dr. J.B. Ryan said, the mind is the greatest power in all of creation. Now think of this for a second, and this is rather important. What does your mind look like? You see, you and I think in pictures. If you're going to change your mind, where would you start? Do you know that this causes all kinds of confusion in most people's lives? No one has ever seen the mind. They've never seen it. And when they start to play with it, it causes confusion. But understand this. Out of all confusion comes order, and it's a higher degree of order than that which existed prior to the confusion. That's right. So let's take a look at the mind, and let's look at paradigms. Okay? In fact, let's look at your mind and your paradigms. Now, I want you to listen really carefully, and I want you to personalize this. I want you to think of what you're doing with your life and what you'd really like to do. I'd like you to think of what your income is, and what would you really like it to be. You know, every morning I wake up, I know I'm going to be doing what I absolutely love to do all day long. I travel all over the world. I literally work all over the world. And everywhere I go, people want what I have. You could be doing the same thing I'm doing because that's what this opportunity entails. In 1934, Dr. Truman Fleet was very involved in the healing arts. He was very involved in holistic health. He said the mind is an activity, it's not a thing. Many pointed out, no one's ever seen the mind. However, we must have an image, or there's no order in the mind. Now think of that for a moment. If I asked you to think of your car, you would get an image on the screen of your mind. You could tell me the color and the size of it, how many doors, how many wheels, etc. If I asked you to think of your refrigerator or what your front door looks like, you could tell me, you could tell me the color and what it was made of. If I asked you to think of your mind, what happens? Frequently, if I'm teaching this in a, in a ballroom, which I was yesterday, I told people, I said, listen, we have a few hundred people in the ballroom in front of me, and I said, if I asked you if you would help me change the setup of the room, you probably all agree you would. So I said, okay, let's do it. And people would stand up, and they'd be looking at each other, and they'd be talking, and they'd say, well, what's he want us to do? Now, if I pointed to the back of the room, and I said, I want you to make that the front of the room, and this the back of the room, it would happen in a few minutes because they had an image. But without the image, they wouldn't know how it happened. Well, that's the way it is with the mind. And this good doctor said, I'm going to give you a picture of the mind. But he said, let the large circle represent the mind and the small circle represent the body. Now, by the way, this is the most valuable idea I have ever learned. I could take you into multinational corporations where the chief executive officer would tell you, this is the most valuable idea I've ever learned. It's so basic and so simple. We'll take the mind and we'll divide it into two parts. That's the conscious, the subconscious, and that's the body. Now stay with me for a moment. The conscious mind and the subconscious and the body all play a role. The conscious mind is the thinking mind. That's the part of you that thinks, and you can think anything you want. It's also the educated mind. That's right. I remember when I, computers first really started to pick up speed, I was at Nightingale Conant, and I asked Carson Conant, who was sitting at the computer, I said, what can you do with that? He said, anything you can think. Now, that's the kind of education we want. We want to be able to know that there's no end to what we can do. That's where our intellect is resident. Now, this all happens if they're in the consciousness. Now, the subconscious operates totally different. That's our emotional mind. 
and it does not operate like the conscious mind. Let's look at this. The conscious mind is where you can choose. You can actually choose. You can choose to do what you want to do. You can choose to think what you want to think. You have the ability here to accept or reject ideas. All this talk about the economy being a bad economy, you have the ability to reject that information. It's not the bad economy for everyone. You can reject it. You know what our problem is as people? We accept what we should be rejecting and we reject what we should be accepting. This is the part of our mind we are, where we originate ideas. Now the subconscious mind has no ability to reject. It must accept everything that comes to it and get this. It cannot differentiate between what's real and what's imagined. It cannot tell the difference between what's real and what's imagined. Now that is going to play a big role because we can build an idea in our conscious mind and we can impress that idea upon the subconscious mind. And it doesn't matter what it is, it will work. Now let's look here. This is us today. We're getting inundated with information. And as that information comes into our mind, we have a reasoning factor. We've got a faculty in our mind that's called reason, it's the inductive reasoning factor, that gives us the ability to think. And we have the ability to say, I'm not, having, I'm not going to accept that idea. But we don't do that. You know what we do? I'm going to show you what we do. We leave our mind wide open, and that information goes right into our subconscious mind. Why does that happen? Because of the paradigm. We are programmed to leave our mind wide open. And that is the very reason 90-some percent of our population never, ever live the way they're capable of living. Now let's close the curtain on that for a moment and ask, why does that happen? Let's go back to when we were an infant. When we arrived on the scene, this is how we arrived. We didn't have any conscious faculties. We couldn't reject anything. Everything that was going on around us went right into our subconscious mind. That is why we speak the language we speak. This is why we like the food we like. This is why we have the prejudice that we have. This is why we think some people are better than others. Now think of this for a moment. This is enormous. The thinking of the people you're surrounded by when you're a baby goes right into your subconscious mind. And it's the repetition of this information going into your subconscious mind that literally programs your mind. This is where your self-image was formed. The image you hold of you was built before you could even think. Now, a child that's raised with a respectable amount of criticism is going to grow up very insecure. The child that's raised with a fair amount of praise grows up as a reasonably confident individual. But everything that is programmed in there, it controls us. That's where the paradigm is formed. It's a multitude of ideas that are fixed in our subconscious mind. It's why we speak the language we speak why we like the food we like, why we act the way we do. Now, we're literally programmed to do that until we're around five, six years old when we start to think for ourselves. And you see, the truth is we never really do think for ourselves. That's why we leave the mind open today. And we just buy whatever the news stations tell us. It's really silly. Now, let's think of this for a moment. Let's say these are our sensory factors. We can see, hear, smell, taste, touch. We're picking up information from outside. Okay? We pick the information up from outside. It's also our intellectual mind, though. And we have these higher faculties. That's right. And you know something? That's our creative mind. Now, we can actually tell the paradigm, get out of town. We can change our paradigm. 51 years ago, that's what I did. I literally changed the ideas that were programmed into my mind. Now, do you know that we can show you how to help people do that? We can show you how to do that. And when we do, I'm going to tell you, your whole life starts to change. You have the ability to create 
a phenomenal image in your conscious mind. And then you can get emotionally involved with that image. And when you do, everything in your life changes. Because you move into a new vibration, your actions change, and that is how you change the results in your life. <clears throat> now this is a powerful, powerful concept that we're dealing with here. See, there's only two known ways to change a person's paradigm. Just two. One is an emotional impact, and the other is the repetition of an idea. Now look at this for a moment. I'm going to show you how repetition works when you're changing paradigms. Let that white line represent the sound of a CD playing. Now you get a CD that's just full of phenomenal ideas. The red line represents you listening to the sound of the CD playing. Now think what I'm saying. The white line is the sound of the CD playing. The white line is me talking right now. The red line will represent you listening to me talking right now. And all of a sudden I say something and an idea hits your mind and you take off on what we call a thought trip. You move on to a different frequency, a frequency of thought. And you start thinking about that idea. You're not listening to me any longer. You hear me, but you're not listening. And then you come back down, and you start to listen. And away you go again. And another idea hits your mind. And off you go on another thought trip. Do you know that you could listen to the same CD a thousand times and not really consciously entertain an idea on it more than once or twice. And some ideas you never consciously entertain. You see, your mind gets busy when you start doing this. Well, I have found this is how lives literally change. They literally change. Now, this program is powerful. There are 12 very powerful lessons in this program. And when you start to use this, you're going to find that results change, and they change like night and day. That's right. Thinking and Results is 12 powerful paradigm-changing DVDs with comprehensive action planner. Now let me tell you how this program came about. I have studied this for 51 years. I've worked in this business for 46 years. As I said, I've worked all over the world. I have worked with some of the largest companies in the world. Back in 2006, a lady came to a seminar that I was conducting in Vancouver, Washington. It was a three-day program. And this lady sat there and she told me later she was absolutely astounded with the information she was hearing. She was a banking attorney. She was one of the top banking attorneys in the world. She had studied in America and in Great Britain. She passed out of university as the number one banking law student in all universities in the United States. So. Needless to say, when she graduated, the top law firms were after her. And she worked with the top law firms on Wall Street and in D.C. And then she went back to her home city of Seattle. And she started her own firm. And for 20 years, she worked in some of the banks all over America. And she was bringing banks together, acquisitions, IPOs. I mean, she was into the heavy money. But she said, as she sat in our program, she was thinking, I had never been taught the information that you're teaching. In all the education that I had, she had a doctorate degree in law, but she had never studied what I was teaching. And then she thought of the boardrooms that she was in, where she was having difficulty getting executives to agree on points. And she thought, if they only had this information. And that's when she decided she was going to study everything that I had. 
She became a consultant with our company. She took a 13-month coaching program. She brought ev bought every program that we had and studied them. And then she approached me and she said, I would like to make a program with you. And she told me everything about it. I said, okay. But I said, you're going to have to put up the money for it. Because I have a lot of people tell me this. But they don't really want to go out on a limb. She said, I'll do that. And so she put this program together. Now, if you were watching this program, you would think I made it. I did not make it. She directed it. She produced it, directed it. She did the packaging, the design for the packaging. She did the editing. And she designed 12 different subjects, 12 subjects of information that she knew that I knew that I could teach. And she put them in an organized way. You know, Carnegie said, you need information, great information, and it needs to be intelligently directed. That's really what she did. And she got me to go in front of a camera. She says, I want you to explain this idea, and then I want you to explain that idea. And that's how this program was built. I was so fascinated with what this woman did because she did such a phenomenal job on it. I eventually asked her to close her law practice and run our company. Now, we've been in business a long, long time. We operate in 100 countries. And she came and she joined us. Today, she's the president and chief executive officer of Life Success Productions. Her name is Sandra Gallagher. Thinking into results was her baby. I would like you to listen carefully as Andrew Gallagher, our president and chief executive officer, explains a few very important points. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you about a very important opportunity. Sandy, I'd like you to take it over. Thank you, Bob. You know, I was just thinking about it. It has been six years to the day, two days ago, that I, I was in a seminar first time with Bob and came up with the idea of thinking into results. And it is such a great program, and I am really proud of it. And it's not just because of how well it's been received around the world, which it has, but because of all the lessons that I learned from this program. I mean, it dramatically changed my life. And um, I remember uh, when I was in the seminar for the first time, August 18, 2006, and I was sitting there hearing this stuff for the first time, and I, w I really was blown away because I was physically sitting there, but in my mind I was flashing back over two decades of being in boardrooms and executive offices and seeing these people that were so smart they could really figure their way through the wall. I mean, Harvard grads, Stanford grads, you name it. And yet they weren't getting the results that they wanted. They weren't making it happen. And I didn't understand because I was making it happen. I was one of those, you know, 2 to 3% that things were going well. Things were going really well. And so I couldn't figure it out, and I didn't know how to help them. And so I get stuck in trying to get deals done and accomplish things I wanted to do. And then I'm in this seminar in 2006, and I'm listening to Bob Proctor for the first time, and he's talking about these ideas. And, man, I've studied them every day since then, and, and they continually unfold in the power they have to help you get the results you want. You can really help people with this information. And, and so I'm sitting in the seminar, and all of a sudden, I got it. It's like, now I understand why they're not getting the results that they want. And, and I said to myself, you know, at this point, I wasn't willing to say it to anybody else because I thought of myself as just an attorney. But I said to myself, I'm going to create a program that has Bob Proctor in it with all this information and take it into corporations and really help these people. Look at this. Um, Look at this. Uh, um, look at this uh, slide that I want to show you. It's a it's a graphic of this understanding that I got in that seminar. See, school gave us valuable knowledge, but school never taught us how to alter our paradigms. Therefore, we frequently do not do what we already know how to do. See, these people had superior knowledge, but they got inferior results, and it caused great confusion. Look at it this way, at the stick person diagram that Bob went over with us. 
you see this individual with all this book knowledge, incredibly well educated, but in the subconscious part of the mind is the paradigm. And it's the paradigm that determines the results that someone gets. And so they were getting inferior results because the paradigm was not supporting the results they wanted. If you want to change the results, you absolutely have to create a new paradigm. And we don't know how to do that. We're not taught how to do that. That's why people get stuck. You know, it's the same thing that Ruskin was saying when he, um, he said this quote. Look at this quote. He said, education does not mean teaching people what they do not know. It means teaching them to behave as they do not behave. That's exactly what thinking into results is all about. See, we have to begin to think. Bob said that in that seminar, and I thought, what's he talking about? I'm an attorney. I know how to think. But it wasn't the right kind of thinking. See, I didn't understand the idea that thinking is the highest function we are capable of performing. We have to learn to think if we want to get the results that we want. And so many people are not getting the results that they want, regardless of the degrees and education that they have. You see, I was reading this in, uh, by Joel Barker. It's a really incredible statement. Listen to this. New paradigms put everyone practicing the old paradigm at risk. Now, I want you to think about these executives and directors when you, when you listen to this. The higher one's position, the greater the risk. The better you are at your paradigm, the more you have invested in it, the more you have to lose by changing paradigms. So even when people understand that it's the paradigm, and most people don't, but when they begin to understand that, they don't want to change because there's so much at risk. But we have to change the paradigm. That's what thinking into results is all about. When people begin to think, results change. And we want to change the results. Buckminster Fuller, he has this incredible quote. See, he was a great thinker. And in fact, when he would train new students, architecture students, he, the very first thing he would do is get rid of all the knowledge they had up, until the, to, up to that point. And he'd get them really to think. And he said, when you want to change something, he said, never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So we find ourselves just kind of banging heads, fighting the existing reality. It doesn't work. We have to create a new model. And that's what thinking into re results does. It's a new model to help people get the results they want. And there are 12 transformational subjects in thinking into results. And you, if you become a facilitator in this program, you'll learn every one of these lessons and how to facilitate them with people to help them get the results they want. Now, it starts with worthy goals and then goes into the knowing-doing gap. The worthy goals, it starts there because people are familiar with goals. It's, it's, it's something that they're used to. But we teach them to think about goals in a totally different way. See, we want them to, to get a goal that is so big, that is so inspiring for them, that it gives them the incentive to change the paradigm. That's what it's all about, is changing the paradigm. And a goal, it's not what you get. It's who you become in the process of achieving the goal. And the knowing doing gap, we get them to understand the difference, just what we talked about, between what we know in our conscious mind and what we do, and why we don't do what we know how to do. Then in the power of the mind, see, each of these builds on the other. In the power of the mind, we start to get them to really understand how the paradigm has changed by understanding the power that each of us has in our mind. And then we get to the secret genie. And of course, it's called the secret genie. This is the sick person diagram. And this is so powerful. I remember the first time Bob put the diagram up in the seminar. And I have to admit, I chuckled. I, I kind of laughed like, you know, this is so powerful. But I guarantee you, that is such a powerful graphic to help you understand how we think and how to change our paradigm. And then in thinking in the results, that's lesson five. And that's where we learn about our intellectual faculties. And we learn that they are the key to the treasury of our subconscious mind to help us get the results we want. Lesson six is environment. James Allen, he said, environment is but our looking glass. See, what we're talking about here is our self-image and our team image, if we're working with a team to achieve a goal. And understanding that whatever our individual image is or the collective image, that is going to be evident in our environment, in the results that we get. 
And when we understand that and know that we can change the image, we can get different results. Now, seven is dealing with fear. I'm going to come back to that one in a minute. That's my favorite lesson. Um, lesson eight is the power of praxis. See, the power of practice is integration of belief with behavior. And until you really get that, you're never going to get lasting change in the results that you get. You're never going to get consistently the results that you want to get. So that's a critical lesson. Nine is attitude. The magic word is attitude. And yet if you were to go down the street and ask the first 10 people that you met what attitude is, they don't know. Most people don't know. But it's our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. And when they're all aligned, that's when we get the results that we want. Lesson 10 is leadership. See, a leader wants to master each of these lessons one through nine and use that in their leadership. And this program brings out the leader in everyone. Lesson 11 is the impression of increase. And I love that lesson. It's a very powerful lesson. And when you have a good leader that learns how to implement the impression of increase in everything they do, you have a great leader. And lesson 12, magnifying the mind, that's how you really create what Napoleon Hill calls is the third mind, the third, the powerful mind that really helps us magnify our individual minds. So 12 transformational subjects. I told you I'd come back to seven. Seven's dealing with fear. And I love the terror barrier because I've gone through it so many times. What is the terror barrier? Um, this lesson is called Trample the Terror Barrier. The terror barrier is when you are entertaining a, a new idea. Maybe it's that you want to learn to facilitate this program. And you want to get into the, to the certification program. You want to get into a new business. And so you entertain this new idea. But it's not in harmony with your conditioned way of thinking. So what happens? You hit a wall that we call the terror barrier. And it just, your central nervous system just goes wacko. It's like you want to step back into the safety zone. But that's the most dangerous place because you can't grow there. You can't really live the life you want when you retreat back to the safety zone. And I know this firsthand when I was getting ready to close my practice. Um, Bob mentioned that he asked me to come in and take over as CEO. That was in January of 2009. And I was still practicing law full time. And I wanted to close my practice, but I, I, I wasn't going to do it because of the terror barrier. Well, I wrote a letter to 2,000 of my clients and, and colleagues, and I had it all queued up, and I'm getting ready to send it to tell them I'm closing my practice. I'm going into a new industry, telling them how excited I was. And I know what the terror barrier is. I know it's in my conscious mind. It doesn't mean that it's real. It's just in my conscious mind, and it's fear, and it's real in your mind. And so I've got this letter all queued up. I'm ready to hit send, and I, I just stop. I can't do it. But I'm not going to let that terror barrier win and keep me from my dream. And so I picked up the phone, and I know if you ask Bob <laughs> to help you, even if you don't ask him, if he feels you get stuck, he will unstick you. And I, he said, what are you doing? Well, I've got this letter all queued up, ready to send it. 2,000 people, close my law practice, but I can't. I just can't do it. He said, jump. He said, you'll develop wings along the way. And then in his booming, deep voice, he says, hit send. And the way he said it, I just, my finger went to send, and I pressed send, and off it goes. And you know that noise that you hear when an email goes off? And, I, and it went off, but I still, I checked the outbox, like, please, please don't send. I, I hope it didn't go out. But it went out. And uh, I, I actually screamed at that point. But within 24 hours, I had 892 emails back of people saying, wow, I wish I had that kind of purpose in my life. I wish I had that kind of passion. I wish that I had the courage to do something like that. And I had several lawyers say, you know, I really want to do something like that. I don't want to be here. But I'm going to sit at this desk until the day I die. And I knew they meant it because they weren't really thinking. That's the power in this program. And I'll tell you, if you're thinking about getting into this industry, get into this industry. Jump. Do it. I am so grateful that I hit that send button. I am so grateful. I love what I do. This is the greatest industry. You can help so many people and make a tremendous amount of money while you're doing that. So now I'm going to hand it back over to Bob, and he's going to give us some more lessons. Thanks very much, Sandy. Here's a good question for you. 
have you ever seriously asked yourself why? Why do some people earn so much more than others? Well, you know, Emerson talked about it. In fact, he wrote an entire essay on it, The Law of Compensation. And there is an absolute law that governs the earning of money. And here it is. The Law of Compensation clearly states that the amount of money you earn will always be in exact ratio to the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty there will be in replacing you. Now think of this for a moment. The need for what you do. Let me tell you what we do. We help people understand why they're stuck in life. We help them understand how to make the changes they have to make to confidently go and live the way they really want to live. We help people understand how to earn what they want to earn, regardless of what the economy is like. During the Great Depression of the 30s, there were people earning all kinds of money. Not everyone was out of work. Not everyone was looking for work. You hear all kinds of talk about the bad economy now. It's not bad for everyone. I don't think the economy is bad at all. We're having our best year. Now, I want you to think about this. We help students gain a better understanding how to release the genius within them and get the grades in school they want to get. How couples can learn how to have a more harmonious relationship. We've got an ingenious system built within us to keep our body in excellent working order. Now, there's a tremendous need for a person to help people understand that. And you want to know something? That need is global. It's every bit as much on one part of the world as it is in the other. It's as necessary in Iraq as in Indiana, as in New Zealand, as in New England. Everywhere you go, people are wanting this. We are busier than I have ever been in the 46 years that I've been in the business. So the need is there. It's a tremendous need. Then it's your ability to do it. Now let's suppose you've become very good at filling the need. Do you think you'd be difficult to replace? Well, you would. And that's when your stock goes up. That's when you find yourself earning the money. So you see, the focus is right here, developing your ability to do what it is you do. You want to become a master at doing this. Now we have a continuous ongoing training program. It never ends. You've got a strong team of people that you would be working with. And you know, I don't know of anything where there's a greater need than what we do. We can earn a lot more money than a lawyer can earn. You can earn a lot more money than a neurosurgeon. Everybody's got a brain, but not everybody needs to have it operated on. You can earn more money at this than an engineer. Because everyone in the world is looking for something that will help them understand why they're living the way they're living and how they can begin living the way they really want. You see, if I want to be free, I've got to be me. Now, to know me, I need help. And you know something? That's what we do. Now, think of this. To change your life, you have to change your life. And that's really what we treat people to teach people to do. This is a phenomenal opportunity. I have loved this for years. Now a certified thinking into results facilitator consultant has the opportunity to earn a very high income and at the same time gain tremendous satisfaction for their efforts. You see, authorized thinking and results facilitators earn ridiculous amounts of money if they're really good at it. And they can get really good at it because we'll train them how to do it. See, a thinking into result program coupled with this 13-week facilitated course would cost a person anywhere from 2500 to 7500 That's what you would be charging. Now, when a consultant facilitates a group class, the fees, of course, accelerate substantially. Now, I don't have the time to go into this in any great depth here. 
but we're giving you an overview. And if you think that you'd like to introduce this program to individuals, to facilitate them using it properly, this is really the place to be. You see, you would receive five of these programs with the opportunity. The investment for this opportunity is, is, is ridiculously low. It's complete with the training. It's not a substantial investment. It's in fact, it's a relatively small one. Therefore, it's available to all serious individuals, and we have terms available. You'll see how much well, we'll, we'll sit and talk to you. And I'll tell you something else. This, the investment for this is rising. It's going up next month. So there's a great opportunity here. Talk to somebody this month and establish this is the opportunity. All right? Now, where do you go? Just go right there. Go to this address. Go to bobproctor.com forward slash earn as you learn. And become a facilitator where you can show people how to get the best out of this. You know, I love this quote. Joseph Campbell said, the cave we fear to enter holds the treasure that we seek. Now, that's a quick overview. If you want more information, there's where you get it. Just dial in that number. Leave your information. Leave your name, your email address, and your phone number. And don't forget to leave the best time to call. And we will have someone call you and explain this opportunity in detail. You will be fascinated with the business. I can assure you that. I'll be working directly with you. I've been working at this a long time. We're going to have a phenomenal future. So go there right now. Don't ask anybody else what they think you should do. Take the right road. Don't go back to where you were. Go to where you want to be. Go to bobproctor.com forward slash earn as you learn. And we will get a hold of you. We will get in touch with you. And we will help you do the thing that we've been doing for a long time. And you're going to absolutely love it. I want to thank you for coming on the line. I trust that you look into this further. Leave the information. Don't pass it up. You're not on this line by accident. You're here because you're supposed to hear. I really believe that everyone's in the right place for the right reason at the right time. I'll look forward to meeting you, shaking your hand, and welcome you into our company.